Looks like trouble ahead. The rendezvous could be compromised. Stay focused. Contact! Get down! That's our man. Well, our contact anyway. Crop saw it. Advent. Hobbit. Lost Hummer. For dead. They were sent here to hunt. To purge the drop. She is free of the imposter gods. I would give anything that all my kind could say the same. Even sit down with your reapers. Now, we must go. Rendezvous with Outrider is further ahead. Proceed through this district as quickly as possible, but be careful. Something tells me this city still has a few more surprises to throw our way. Surprises are the least of our worries today. It is these Reapers of yours that are of true concern. We, the Skirmishers, were created by the false gods of this world to serve and die at their pockets. We retain all that we were and more. And our prowess in battle serves us well in our cause. In close combat, none can stand opposed to us. So, Betos there was voiced by Denise Crosby, who is Lieutenant Tasha Yar on The Next Generation. Mox is voiced by one Michael Dorn, who famously played Worf. That he's playing another warrior alien guy, I don't think it's any coincidence. I don't think that's a mistake at all. Anyway, the skirmisher can fire their bullpup and move in any order on their turn, or they can even shoot twice on their turn if desired. The grapple adds to their versatility, allowing the skirmisher to quickly traverse the battlefield and get into advantageous positions. The skirmishers are all about mobility, and obviously the ability to fire their gun twice is huge. However, there's a problem with skirmishers. Compared to Templars and Reapers, they're a little bit on the weaker side as far as their abilities go. Their bullpup is meant for close range encounters. It has terrible accuracy at mid and even worse accuracy at long range. And a lot of their more effective attacks require them to either pull an enemy toward them or get right in the face of an enemy, which of course, runs the risk of them being flanked. The grapple is nice because it doesn't take movement. Don't remember seeing these things before. You were not meant to. Purifiers were created with a singular purpose to contain the Drock Ten, the lost. We must eliminate this patrol quickly before others arrive. Fine by me. Take them down. So, let's see how effective he is in this next fight. Ah, uh, that's not good. And speaking of this next fight, we're up against some Advent Purifiers. Wow, nice miss. So, Advent Purifiers are, obviously, a new unit for War of the Chosen. They are, in short, flamethrower-wielding enemies who can set parts of the map on fire. Confirmed. Now, they're not entirely threatening on their own. You kidding when you said the problem is when they die. Careful with these things. We don't need to take any unnecessary chances. As you saw there, killing the purifier caused it to explode. This is a problem, especially for rangers, because it 
basically eliminates the possibility of melee units having any efficient or effectiveness against them. The chance that they explode is a 50-50 chance. So you basically want to always assume that they will explode and keep your distance from them. Otherwise, you're in for a world of hurt. Nice miss. Yeah, I didn't get it. And my accuracy is terrible. So here comes the flamethrower shot. And unfortunately, it actually decided to hit now. So, enemies or units that are put on fire, that are set ablaze, I should say, that's proper grammar. On my way. They typically suffer a penalty to their aim and are unable to use some of their abilities. Also, there's this problem where if they walk through portions of the map that are on fire, they will be set ablaze. Now, you can immediately extinguish the fire by using the hunker down action. Hunkering down is a defensive action that increases that unit's dodge and defense scores. but obviously at the cost of being able to do anything else. The other problem with things being set on fire, like cars, is that they will explode. That was really close. So that purifier decided to explode. Thankfully, the wall between them and this rookie took the explosion. Now, if that were a grenade, that probably would have killed the rookie. I got extremely lucky there. Ready to like, engage. Extremely lucky. Scanning. Good to go. So yeah, purifiers are not particularly threatening on their own. The problem comes from their propensity to explode upon death, which line. can be used against enemies. They will damage friendlies as well as or friendlies to them as well as your soldiers. They also carry grenades that can, obviously, set things on fire, in addition to doing explosive damage. may be down, but unfortunately, that was our extraction point. I fear that is not the worst of it. Multiple biological signatures rapidly on approach to your position. The lost. The sound of combat excite them. They are drawn to it. And you just blew up a fuel truck? There was no other choice. Find an alternate exit. We will deal with the lost. Draklar. Dashers. They are not as docile as the rest of their kind. An apt description. It would seem the mutation has somehow accelerated these dashers' metabolism, allowing enhanced speed and agility, with a corresponding increase in aggression. So, in addition to grenades being discouraged against the Lost because they don't grant bonus actions, there's also the fact that explosives, be it a grenade, an exploding car, or anything else, draw the attention of the Lost. This translates to extra pods of Lost spawning. So, yeah, don't even bother with grenades if you can. With the Lost alone, at least. We also have these cool guys called Dashers. Why? So, as it sounds, dashers are lost that can cover much greater distances and still have an action to attack your units. Right now, they are priority targets. Now, the lost alone don't deal a lot of damage. They might hit for like one or two damage per swing. 
Um, the problem comes from the fact that you don't have a lot of health at these low ranks, and one hit from a loss can potentially be half your health bar. As well as, given that the loss come in real big numbers, allowing multiple loss to swarm your soldier is basically the same as taking a direct crit to the face from an advent unit. So yeah, it's in your best interest to eliminate as many loss as possible per turn. I think that goes without saying, but I'm saying it for posterity. Good miss. Excellent miss. It's still moving. Three in a row. I think we've got something here. Just need another minute. You have your minute. Readings are all over the place. The lost are almost right on top of you. These lost seem to be pretty sensitive to noise. The sounds of combat are likely to draw even more of them. Right, so. One of the trucks that we were taking cover behind while we were engaging the purifiers just exploded because it was set on fire. So that attracted an extra lost group. And look at that, here they come. Miss, miss, and wow, you hit. We found a new route that should get you to the rendezvous point safely. The lost are still converging on the area, so make it fast. That will not be a problem. Alright, so we've got some loss to chew through. I'm gonna start with Mox because he has the best odds of getting rid of these guys. God damn it. That's just a product of having low damage dealing weapons. Why? This could be a problem now. I was not expecting for that first attack to just do nothing. Great! Now we'll get to see the Lost slap Mox around. They missed. Awesome. Lucky break. That's XCOM, baby. You are ultimately beholden to the random number gods. And even if I were to shoot the lost point blank with these rookies, they would only have an 85% chance of hitting them at best. Which is still enough room for the attacks to miss when you really need them. Because as Murphy's Law dictates, anything that can go wrong, will go wrong. And that's especially true in XCOM. Alright, one more hit, come on. There you go. Okay, so mercifully, after you eliminate all the lost in this section, uh, they stop spawning. I run. That luxury will not be afforded to you in most missions with the lost. I'm ready. Typically, they'll keep spawning, which is why they are great for farming Looking XP if you really position. want to. Roger that. But in most cases, they just, they're just a I headache. Advance. They can really slow you down because you have to spend turns just wiping them out. And especially if you have to contend with what happened here, why is the game stuck? Uh, if you have to contend with both them and Advent Forces, there's a lot of ammo being spent. Why is the game not advancing? Okay, that was weird. Stepping off. XCOM is not a perfect game by any means. I mean, it came out in 2016 and has had many patches since then. But even to this day, there are still things that come up. And I guess I'm a very big liar because another lost pod just spawned. I didn't think they would do that. I haven't seen that happen before. But it's not a problem because we're at the evac zone. Outrider and the first team should be waiting for you ahead. I know this wasn't the easiest stop, but I have to believe it'll still be worth it in the end. That depends on the Reapers. So it may as well have not spawned. Anyway, enjoy this nice loading screen of a ruined city while we move on to the last stage of the mission. Which, of course, will have a cutscene. So yeah. Nice cityscape. Real nice neighborhood.
got street lights at least. There's lighting. I don't have anything interesting to say. Oh, here we go. Rendezvous point directly ahead. Let's try and play nice today, people. So, Advent's most brutal captain comes to atone for his crimes. I am no longer that being. I am free now. Taking off that helmet does not change what you are. Reapers have long memories. Elder Kraxad. Any time. The way I see it, we have two options. Join forces and kick the Elders off our world, or kill each other here and now. The choice is yours. Combine strength if we are to have any chance of success. You are welcome to try. Your Reapers face a being such as this. They appeared without warning years ago. Had they not, we would have already regained our home. <laughs> such arrogance. The elders will extend throughout the universe. So what the hell is that all about? Well, I could explain it, but I think I'll let the game do the introduction. Which will occur in just a second as soon as I'm done positioning my soldiers. Holding position. And you know what? Let's move you over here just understood. Moving out. So, enter. So many have already fallen. The assassin. And yet my work is never done. The elders grant me their vision, and with it, I am everywhere. So the assassin is one of the chosen I am at your service. in War of the Chosen. What's her deal? Fast. Well, Maintaining position. the chosen is essentially a boss unit Cover. that can appear on missions. Holding. The assassin no in particular is a highly mobile, <laughs> melee happy boss unit who doesn't care about cover, which is why I didn't even bother trying to give that sense of cover. Now, unfortunately, that was all of that soldier's health. So now she's bleeding out. Fantastic. She's probably not going to make it to the end of the mission. Now, the Chosen can roll strengths and weaknesses. They're mainly randomized, however, if you do this tutorial, the Assassin will always get the strength to ignore Overwatch shots, Shadow Step, and will always be weak against Reapers. I will go. In this playthrough, it looks like the assassin also rolled a weakness to close range attacks. So, the closer an attack is to the assassin, the greater chance it has to deal increased damage. Actually, I think it's just within a certain range attacks to increase damage. 
That wasn't a whole lot of damage, but yeah. it was enough. I had not expected this conflict to be so exhilarating. You surprise me, XCOM. Still, the Elder's will was that none survive this day. I cannot leave that to fortune. The sonic dispersal waves emitting from that pod are crisscrossing a massive area. <laughs> And the game is once again hanging as it spawns the lost. Meaning that thing just rang the dinner bell for every remaining lost in the city. An accurate assessment. The entire lost biomass seems to be converging on this position. Then let's get you all the hell out of there. Firebrand's en route to the evac coordinates now. Get moving. All right, so here we go with the Lost again. Now, mercifully, the Chosen, we only had to reduce her to half health for this mission. In real missions, you're gonna have to really kill her. You're than you look. Also, defeating the Chosen in like a random mission is not a permanent kill on the Chosen. I'm on the move. She will come back and will continue to antagonize you unless certain conditions are met. Which we'll discuss. Good rhythm. We are known to them. Remember, they are not. You must keep me So we're just gonna keep cutting our way through the lost as we make our way to the extraction point. And unfortunately I didn't have a whole lot of actions that turn. Which means this lost can swing on this guy. And it missed. Very nice. Initial analysis of these creatures' movement patterns reveals an almost coordinated attack strategy. Perhaps they're not the mindless automatons they initially appeared to be. An intriguing, if not horrific, possibility. Kaigen finds a lot of things intriguing. That's like one of his favorite words. You're going to be hearing that from him a lot. Return to your gods. Especially with the things that he should not be finding intriguing. So I don't think I'm going to be able to get this soldier out alive, but I'm going to try my damnedest to try and get to the extraction point. I don't think three turns is enough movement to get there. It's just not physically possible. In short order. But goddamn, am I going to try? <laughs> I am handicapping myself by having that soldier not have a weapon ready to shoot the lost, but How whatever. How these creatures can still be in this city? Advent, Advent city purifier squads in city I would have been able to stabilize her if I had a med kit. Even thrive. We do not know why. But unfortunately, I did not bring one with me. cut through this clothing store here in order to get to the evac point. Copy that. Yeah, I can't even call evac here. So this is one of those times that evac is not available normally because obviously there's a predetermined evac zone. Location confirmed. And here comes the loss. They're going to be pouring in through this alleyway, probably. Yep. Or whatever this gap between buildings is. I did not exist when this city stood whole. Still, I feel revulsion at what happened to this place, to these people. I believe you. Yep, so that soldier is now gone. I tried. But there simply wasn't enough time and movement to get her out alive. I can thank the assassin for that one. I need more ammo. The assassin's melee strikes, as I said, do not respect cover or defense. I think I'm 99% sure that they will always hit. And while they're not supposed to kill right away, 
they will put the target into a dazed state. Which, they're basically incapacitated for the turn. Unless you can get a friendly unit next to them to snap them out of it. However, even after being snapped out of a daze, that unit's movement and aim will be severely penalized. The risk of leaving a dazed unit out and about is that the Chosen's prerogative is to hit that dazed unit with a move called Extract Knowledge. Now this is kind of getting into something that's not supposed to come up till after this mission, but in essence, what the Chosen do is appear on missions, try to incapacitate one of your soldiers, and forcefully extract knowledge as to XCOM's whereabouts from them. Now, if this happens, the Chosen will leave the map, but they will also gain knowledge as to where the Avenger there will is. There come a day when my people take back this place for our own. If they are all like you, that is a likely possibility. After the Chosen gets enough knowledge, they can mount an, a direct attack on the Avenger, which, if you fail, will result in a game over, because they basically destroy the Avenger or storm it and recapture you. And there is no Gatecrasher 2 to break you out. So, it's kind of prudent that you deal with the Chosen in a timely manner. Good copy. Moving on target. Alright, so just more Chosen. Blast through. Nothing particularly interesting to say here. Oh dear. I'm on the move. No compromise. My watch begins. We're gonna keep everyone together as best as I can. The sharpshooter is lagging behind a little bit. There's something I should mention with sharpshooters, by the way. Um, sharpshooters require both of their action points in order to fire their sniper rifle. If they move even once, they are limited to shooting their pistol. So basically, in order for them to shoot their sniper rifle, they can't move. Detecting additional loss, converging near the evacuation coordinates. I advise caution. It would seem the loss are on to our strategy. It is the Elder's will that this alliance fall. It will take more than mere loss for that to happen. So I can't get everyone into the extraction zone this turn. So I'm going to leave a couple units out to kind of cover our sharpshooter, who's the one lagging behind. And then next turn we'll be done. Now, this actually went by kind of quick. I'm pretty pleased with that, despite having lost the soldier. Because this mission can take a while depending on load times more than anything. As well as where the assassin decides to hide. Because, as you saw, the assassin, after scoring a melee hit, can move again. She has a, an ability called Bending Read, which grants her that bonus action. She also has the capacity to turn invisible and hide. But the evac zone's even hotter than we thought. Running out of time here, people. Tell her to hold as long as she can. We will be there. The entire swarm converges upon us. We cannot hold this position much longer. Outrider to Avenger, where the hell's our exit? This is as far as I can get her! No! I do not intend to die this day. I will follow. Time to return home, traitor.